Hey goats, welcome to another video. Right now, we're gonna look at all the F2P weapon options, particularly the craftable ones. Please note that I'm not including the gacha weapons, since there's a high chance that you either have or don't have some of the specific weapons. This is also helpful for the players who don't pull on the weapon banner. So now, whether you're here for that or you're just here to support me, either way, I wanna thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And if you're new here, welcome. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to this channel. So, yeah. Let's keep this intro short, but I'm still talking a lot. Let's cut it now, please. So we're gonna cut the video into 5 parts, one for each weapon type. Of course, you already know that we have 5, depending on the character's assigned weapon. Melee ones are the sword, claymore, and polearm. The ranged ones are the bow and the catalyst. Each one has their own feature, although this can be ignored if what you're looking for is the character's skill or burst only. To add, the concept of the melee or range is also something that the game is trying to evolve since we have melee weapon users who have talents that can be ranged and vice versa. We could also see it as an example in Yelan, a bow user that has an amazing bow kicking animation. Aside from that, her skill particularly is something that requires you to be, you know, close to the enemies. Let's start with the very first one that we'd use, as the Traveler, of course, our basic weapon is the sword. And in one of our earlier quests, we will all receive the Prototype Rancor, one of the most basic swords. The Rancor is a very helpful weapon early on in the game. Each hit of normal or charged attacks would increase your attack and defense by a small percentage. It's not really noticeable, but this is particularly useful for on-field DPS characters, especially for physical builds, more so in Superconduct teams. For early to mid game, say about AR45, the Rancor is useful for the Animo Traveler, Kaya, Bennett, or even Jean, Chi Chi, or Kiching if you have no other options. For late game slash end game, the Rancor drops its value and may only be appreciated because of it being free, as well as its higher base attack than the other 4 star sword options. And in this case, the Rancor is useful mostly on Bennett for a higher attack buff compared to the other 4 star options. So next is the Iron Sting. It has quite a limited number of characters that it could be used for. Typically for its Elemental Mastery substat, although it has decent max attack main stat, its best holders up to endgame are the Animo Traveler, Kazuha, and maybe a viable option for pure EM support Jean. Note however that both Jean and Kazuha may have burst uptime issues, so aim for an extra energy recharge on their artifacts. If you have no other option, Iron Sting may also be used by EM needing characters, or if you build them to be, such as Melt, Bennett, or Kaya. Now we have the Aminoma Kageuchi. The Inazuman craftable weapon, its high attack percent substat makes up for the non-offensive but utility-based passive, which is energy recharge focus. The passive is something you need to keep an eye out for, as it gains up to 3 stacks per skill use, and when you use your burst, you then gain particles depending on how many stacks you accumulated. So the Aminoma is best used on the Animo or Geo Traveler, Kaya, Shengchu, Chi Chi, Keqing, Jean, Ayato, Ayaka, or Kazuha. For limited time event weapons, we don't want to create a FOMO here, and I have to say that although these event weapons are indeed very useful, we can say that they aren't something to feel bad about if you started playing the game after such weapon was given away. So the very first event exclusive weapon was the Festering Desire. Paired with Energy Recharge substat, its passive is focused mainly on skill damage. Very useful for skill-based sword users like Albedo or even the Animo Traveler. Or, if you need the Energy Recharge substat, it's best utilized by Kaya, Bennett, any form of the Traveler, Chi Chi, or Jean. I'd say Sheng Chu, but once you have the Sacrificial Sword on him, at least at R3, it's really hard not to get used to it. Next is the Cinnabar Spindle. This again is used for a skill-centric character, and of course with the defense substat, I guess everybody knows that this weapon was designed for Albedo. Look at that drip. <clears throat> Unless a new character like Albedo, defense scaling skill, sword user is introduced, he's the only character that you can best use this on. And let's give a special mention to the Dark Iron Sword. It's a free weapon given here in Liwei, so if you talk to this guy, Although it's a 3 star and of course has low scaling, it's a 1 weapon per account thing so it's really rare. And yes, um, I feel dumb having accidentally used it as fodder because I didn't lock it. Similar to the Iron Sting, you can use this on the Animo Traveler, Kazuha, or EM Support Gene. 
Now that you have an idea of which craftable sword is usable for who, especially for our F2P goats out there, you can narrow down which character you need more weapon investment into. For example, you're gunning for Kazuha, or you have Kazuha, and you're thinking about getting his signature weapon, you can earn enough gems to try the weapon banner, or keep your gems for future characters or weapons, because you can actually use the iron sting, still proc decent damage, and save enough gems for the future. So yeah, this is for practicality and actually not burning your real life money, right? And we should also acknowledge the fact that we can make use of the other 3 star or 4 star sword options from the gacha, especially those that we get when we try to pull on character banners. So you have the Favonius weapons or the Sacrificial Line, for example. So you know, even as an F2P, you can still cop these other weapons, the 5 stars, albeit of course, you'll have to make do with what you get, especially on the standard banner. And that's where these craftable weapons we just talked about enter the picture. And that's all for the first part of our F2P weapons and who to equip them to. So now, I'd like to show you our last video's welcome giveaway winner. RJ, please message me on my socials. You'll find it on the about page of my channel. Thank you so much for watching, goats. Please like and share the video. And if you found it useful, share it even more. <laughs> um, uh, please subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out you know, in bringing you more guides like this for you, goats. So yeah, please watch out for this F2P weapon series. Next time, we're gonna talk about Claymores.